It's Monday morning. Your alarm goes off, you pick up your phone, you scan through your emails, and then you flip over your calendar to your calendar to remind yourself of everything you have to do today. Now sometimes you have so much to do and so many people to respond to that you feel exhausted before you've even gotten out of bed. And it's Monday morning. Have you ever felt <coughs> this way? I know I have. It's when you've experienced that feeling of overload, when you know you're just not going to get it all done today. So here's how I tackle days like that. I put my phone face down on the dresser, I put on my running shoes, and I head out the door to the nearest trail. Why? Because this is how I find solitude. And solitude is essential to thriving in a world of overload. When I am alone with my thoughts on the trail, there is no hiding from myself. There is nobody to answer to, and no other task I can be accomplishing when I'm out running by myself. So instead, I start to focus on what really matters most to me, what is weighing most heavily on my mind, and what's driving me forward. Now, when I'm finished with my run, I know I need to hurry up, shower, and get to class, but I have found my center for the day. This is the value of solitude. When we spend time alone engaging in something that inspires us, it allows us to reclaim an identity that is wholly ours, not influenced or shaped by the opinions of others or feedback, or by that ever-growing to-do list that threatens to crowd out our space that we need to recharge and re-energize ourselves with the flow of our own unstructured thoughts. Now, I find solitude through running, but you may find it through something else, like music or art or even cooking. But whatever it is, I want to talk about why pursuing your passion in solitude is so important to bringing your best to those around you. Now, let's return to campus. I'm a business school student like many of you, and like many of you, I see these two years as an opportunity for personal development. Now, what that looks like is different for everyone, but at a high level, we're all here to develop as business leaders. Now, Stanford's call to action for its students is change lives, change organizations, change the world. That is a bold mission. So to fulfill this mission, Stanford provides us with all the resources we could possibly ask for to become the best leaders we can be. There's leadership coaching, there are workshops, there are classes, and there's feedback, feedback, feedback at every step <laughs> along the way. We're constantly reminded that feedback is a gift. It certainly is. But here's the catch. The qualities that make great leaders are qualities that none of these classes and no amount of feedback, no matter how good it is, can teach us. These are great tools to have, but are they alone enough to transform us into leaders who are going to change lives, change organizations, and change the world? What about passion? What about authenticity? What about initiative? The irony of a place like business school is that it becomes all too easy to stop taking initiative and start allowing our calendars to just fill up with every opportunity for self-enrichment that comes our way. And as we put more and more structure around our lives and we try to process more and more feedback, we crowd out space for our own thoughts. In our efforts to become the best leaders we can be, we can lose our center and replace it with a to-do list. Now this is when we're in the danger zone because when we lose our center, our authenticity and our passion, qualities that do make great leaders, quickly start to slip away. But this isn't a problem that happens just at business school. This happens everywhere. I'd be willing to bet, whether you're a student or not, that you feel that there just isn't enough time in the day, most days, to do everything you would like to get done. So how do we remain inspired on a daily basis and centered? 
We all make trade-offs every day. Moments of solitude are often the first things that we let go of. But I want to take the next few minutes and ask you to hold on to those moments. Take a step back and think about something that you love to do alone. This is something that brings you great personal satisfaction, but it isn't associated with any external rewards or recognition. This requires you to completely unplug, even if just for a short amount of time. So what does unplugging mean? That means putting down your cell phone. No Facebook, no texting, no tweeting. It means being really alone. So how often do you unplug? Is it once a week? Is it once a month? Is it never? Now hold that thought and think about the last time you did something really cool. Let's say you climbed to the top of a big mountain. Now chances are pretty good when you got to the top of that mountain, you wanted to snap a picture of yourself and post it on Facebook <laughs> and share it with your friends. Now there's nothing wrong with that. But it's worth considering, how would you have felt differently about that experience had you never posted that picture? Or even better yet, if you knew that nobody would ever find out that you even climbed that mountain, how would that accomplishment have felt to you then? We are so plugged in 24-7 that we often forget the extent to which this constant connection to our extended networks and this pursuit of feedback, and this constant need to be checking things off a to-do list does shape how we live our lives. And the more plugged in we are, the more we subconsciously mold our lives and our choices to be what we want all those people to see. Basically, we're living our lives on a stage. But what if the audience just disappeared? How do you view yourself? in the absence of feedback? And how do you look at the world when you aren't looking at it through someone else's lens? And what does it really feel like to do something simply for the deep significance it holds to you personally when it means nothing to anyone else? That is what you learn from solitude. But let me be clear, this is not a talk about you this is a talk about how you bring your best to those around you. Because when we find ourselves just continuing to go through the motions of life, navigating through this world of overload, that is a loss, not just for ourselves, but for everyone around us. I question the wisdom that says, to bring your best to those around you, you've got to put in 110% to everything you do. Well. I would suggest put in 95%. Save that last 5% of your energy and use it for something that you love to do alone. And when you return to what you were doing before, your focus, your energy, and your enthusiasm for the task at hand will multiply. And then you'll be able to put in 150%. So the next time you feel like just putting your phone away, driving to the near nearest hiking trail and going for a hike, or pulling out your guitar and belting out a few of your favorite songs, just do it. It is not selfish. If we want to be the authentic and inspired leaders that Stanford Business School wants us to be, we have to remember what it feels like to be energized, to be passionate, and to be centered. We have to find our center every day and that's not someone, something that someone else can do for us. I found my center this morning on a dirt trail. How are you going to find yours? Thank you. Thank you.